Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And today we're gonna do something that I don't typically do. I happen to have a little bit of free time on my lunch break today. And there are actually two Nintendo related news stories that I want to discuss in the same video. Now you guys who follow me obviously know that this is not how I normally make my videos or have my conversations with you guys. I normally pick a topic that I think is very interesting, whether it's current news or just something random and nebulous, usually Metroid related, where I can kind of just drone on for 15 or 20 minutes and really dive deep into just that one specific topic. But today, like I said, because of the free time and these two interesting sort of things going on, I thought it would be fun to touch on two completely separate topics in one video, which is something that is really common today. I think in the gaming and even in the Nintendo gaming space, uh, there's a big trend on people who kind of just present gaming topics as like a collection of news stories every day. Even some of my YouTube friends actually do that who are very successful at it and I think that that's great. I don't normally do it, but today I'm excited to talk about these two different topics. Ultimately what we're talking about today is the announcement that the next game coming to the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack uh, for the Nintendo 64 is F-Zero X from the Nintendo 64, a phenomenal game. And then, of course, there's this information from this morning about the Advance Wars remake that's coming out on Switch being delayed by a couple of months and some of the crazy circumstances around that. I find both of these topics very interesting and I'm excited to chat about it with you guys. Of course, before we dive into these two topics, I like to remind you guys that I am always trying to grow the channel here on Rule of Two Review. I am very close to 20,000 subscribers and hoping to hit that in 2022. I upload every single week and I talk about all things Nintendo and all things Metroid and I discuss all things gaming. So as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you hear, then I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. So let's first talk about the fun one, which is the F-Zero news. Like I said, Nintendo announced yesterday that F-Zero X from the Nintendo 64 will be the next game coming to the N64 Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack deal, and of course coming with online multiplayer, which is one of the coolest things about it. And it's releasing this week on March 11th, so it's only two days away from like a wide release where everyone can access it. And this is a big deal because the game itself is phenomenal. It's also a big deal because F-Zero is a franchise that most of us Nintendo fans have been wanting to come back for whatever it's been, I guess, 19 years at this point since 2003's F-Zero GX on the GameCube. And, like, every F-Zero game is acknowledged to be a great game. They haven't made a bad F-Zero game, and that's really worth noting. There's only been, I think, four ever made, right? The original SNES game, the N64 game, the GameCube game, and then there was, I think, a Japanese-only Game Boy Advance F-Zero game that very much looked and played like the Super Nintendo game, but it was a new, unique game. And they're all great, and everyone wants this franchise to come back. I mean, it's never been a huge seller, but it's definitely one of Nintendo's oldest and longest-running franchises that has a great track record in terms of quality. And as we say with so many games, in the Switch era specifically for Nintendo, pretty much any first party game that they release on the console and that they put any marketing dollar behind is going to be a significant hit and make them money. So we'd all like to see a new F-Zero game. However, we're not yet getting that new game, although I still want to believe that eventually we will see that game. Instead, we're getting F-Zero X on the Nintendo 64. And I, I definitely want to make sure that people who haven't played this game know how absolutely fantastic it is. Uh, I'm not telling you that it's worth subscribing $50 a year for the Switch Online just to play this game. But I do think that if you happen to already have the online expansion pack and you're paying for it, then you should be very excited for it if you either never played it or maybe you're too young to have played it. Because at this point, it's it blows my mind, but people can be old enough, but still young enough to have not ever played this game when it came out. And it's really fantastic. I also want to mention, you know, you guys know me, like I, the N64, man, it's my favorite console of all time based on my nostalgic memory of it. It's not the most timeless console. Playing the games today, 
doesn't necessarily feel as good as it did at the time, but based on my time as a 16-year-old when the N64 launched, it's my favorite console and the most fun I ever had gaming was when this console came out. However, I still don't think that adding this and Genesis games to the online expansion pack is worth $50 a year. And even with a game as absolutely fantastic and wonderful as F-Zero X is, coming to that N64 game selection, it's still not enough to personally sway me. So like I said, if you've already bought in, if you've already given Nintendo 50 bucks to just have access to these games temporarily, then you should be excited for the game. But, you know, I'm somebody who's still sitting here on the fence about the whole thing, and I really wish that when Nintendo increased the price for N64 games, that they didn't more than double the previous price. I'm still happy paying my 20 bucks a year for the base online service so I can just play games online, like Smash Brothers and Mario Kart. That's fine for me. But the $50 price just to add N64 and Genesis games, it's not worth it to me, man. And even though we're seeing phenomenal N64 games, like Majora's Mask and F-Zero X coming to the selection of games, it's still not doing much for me. I either need a heck of a lot more features added for that $50 a year price, or I need something else significant like GameCube or Wii games also added to the rotation. If they add one of those platforms to the rotation and don't again increase the price, if they add them and keep it at the 50 bucks, yeah, I'm probably gonna sign up at that point. But right now, F-Zero X, as amazing as it is, and you should be excited for it, is not enough to convince me personally to sign up for the service. Now, the next topic has to do with Advance Wars, and this one obviously is treading into controversial, divisive, real-world political territory. This is a, a pretty crazy situation, and I think I might have a bit more of a unique take on this than a lot of other folks do. But ultimately, what happened is this morning, Nintendo put out a tweet confirming the delay and the reason behind it. And here is what they said. In light of recent world events, we have made the decision to delay Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, which was originally scheduled to release on Nintendo Switch on April 8th. Please stay tuned for updates on a new release date. So that's the tweet and the confirmation. Pretty straightforward, you know, not a lot there. They're basically saying the game was going to be coming out in April. It's being delayed. It's because of recent world events. And so we'll tell you more soon. And this has gotten quite a reaction, and it's been mostly a positive reaction, which I'm very glad to see. Now, full disclosure, on just the gaming side of this topic, when it comes to just Advance Wars as a series, despite being an older gamer and a longtime Nintendo fan, I will admit to you guys, I've never really cared for the Advance Wars series, and, you know, I played the GameCube Battalion Wars or whatever it was, and I was like, it's okay, and, you know, the strategy aspect was never something that super appealed to me, so... You know, I've dabbled in these games back in the day when they were releasing, but I've never really been a fan, and I'm honestly just not a fan. So, I have nothing against them. I know that they're great and people love them. I'm not saying that they're bad games. It's just a genre and a play style that doesn't appeal to me. And even this, like, you know, reboot that they were releasing also didn't appeal to me. A, because I don't like the series, and B, I don't really like the cartoony kind of hand-drawn graphic style that it's going for. I know many people love it, and I think that that's fine. I totally understand it. But it, it's not a style that appeals to me. So I had no interest in this Reboot Camp re-release. However, it has been a pretty high-profile release, and a lot of people were excited for it. So it is a big deal for them to make to the, the decision to delay this game, which then brings us to the reason that they're delaying the game, which, of course, is, as they say in their tweet, it's the recent world events. We all know what's happening overseas. Well, I say overseas. I live in the United States, so to me, it's overseas. For you, it might be fairly local, and, and, it's, and so it's a very, very big deal. And I'll admit, I don't really know what we can and can't say in terms of monetization, so I don't even want to say, like, the country names or anything. Um, but, you know, we know what's happening. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to spend too much time getting overly political, but personally, I hate it. It's bad news. I do not support it. I want it to stop. I want the people responsible to definitely, how can I say this safely, uh, you know, pay for what they're doing wrong. I want them slash that person to just be punished the proper way. Like, I just don't like it. I know it's, it's goofy that I'm beating around the bush here, but... Again, YouTube is dumb and stupid with their rules. I don't know what words they're going to pick up that makes it so that I freaking get that 
you know, no monetization dollar sign or whatever. I just don't want to play with that territory. But we know what's going on, man. It sucks. I don't support it. I actively hate it. And for the people involved, it's the worst thing in the world. And I hope it doesn't get worse for the rest of us. Someone needs to definitely make this thing stop ASAP. And now, of course, the real world situation happening is way, 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 way more important than just a dumb video game release. However, we're talking about the video game aspect of this story. So now let's refocus back on the Advance Wars thing and Nintendo's decision to delay the game for this reason. And like I said, I'm really happy to see that it's really being received well and positively. Everyone is like, you know, you're being respectful, you're doing the right thing, it's the right call, we're happy to see it, we're happy to wait, and all this stuff. And I think that's great, because, you know, at the end of the day, making a decision like this just to be respectful, because maybe you think it's the way to go about being respectful, I think it's a good call. And I like to see Nintendo paying attention to what's going on and being considerate for the situation. And so, you know, if I was to ultimately come down on one side or another, I think this falls into the good decision category ultimately. But I will say, and some people might find this a little bit controversial, I will say, as much as I am paying very close attention to what's going on, and you just heard me tell you how much I hate what's going on, um, I actually don't really know that this was maybe the most necessary thing to do. I mean, sure, Advance Wars is a series that is simulating the real world activity, right? That's what it is. It's a strategy game. You know, two countries and two nations and two factions or whatever are going to be like, you know, fighting each other and warring against each other. But it's under the guise of a cartoony fun video game setting, right? Just like any game, just like a Final Fantasy game, or a Zelda game, or a Fire Emblem game, where you've got factions or people combating and fighting and doing these things, and wars happen throughout a lot of these fictional stories. And yes, Advance Wars is trying to play a little bit more into the real world aspect of things, and countries, you know, nations in the game, as I understand it, kind of mirror or echo real world nations, which does make it, you know, a touchy situation for sure. But I guess I'm just somebody who, like, Here's the thing, I'm not mad about it, and I know why they did it, and ultimately I think it's fine that they did it. But I also don't know that it was really just all that necessary. Um, you know, you guys can tell me if you disagree. I know that this is the kind of thing that might get me some flack. But again, I just want to remind you, I'm not somebody who's like... I, don't, I wasn't even going to play the game. So I'm not playing the gamer who's like just upset from my gamer perspective basement about the fact that I'm not getting to play the video game I want to play. I'm not even an Advance Wars fan. I wasn't going to buy or play this game. And I also acknowledge that the real world situation is 10 trillion times more important than any stupid just video game news story, okay? I'm not, I'm not like delusional and, and not able to understand what takes precedence over what. I just think that this is one of those things that doesn't really achieve much. And for fans of the game who can still pay attention to what's happening, I don't know that it was really going to make much of a difference to delay this game because I don't think that releasing it was going to really make much of an impact on the situation. And I don't know that it would have seemed as insensitive to some people as some people think, you know? So I don't know. I know it's a hot take. And again, I'm not saying Nintendo shouldn't have done this. I just don't know that it really achieves all that much. I think that's ultimately what I'm trying to get across. Is it a good thing to do at the end of the day? Yeah, probably. But maybe it just isn't really getting much done. And so, yeah, ultimately, before anyone maybe tries to roast me for being insensitive to the situation, I hope you really heard what I'm saying here and you know that that's not the case. At the end of the day, I applaud them for being respectful and making a decision that they think was a way to exhibit that respect. I just don't know if it actually goes as far as they think it does. That's all I'm saying. It's just a video game. It's a dumb little cartoony thing. And I don't know that it really achieves a whole lot. I think it's more symbolic than it is actually effective. Does that make sense to you guys? And I just don't know that it really made all that much of a difference. But, you know, that's just my opinion, man. Make no mistake. What's happening in reality is way more important than a video game. And I hope that everyone understands that. And I hope that as adults, we're all actually just paying attention to what's happening and we're concerned and caring about the people involved and not as much worried about the video game aspect of it. I'm only talking about it because my YouTube channel is about me talking about video games and this is a game-related piece of news, right? That's the only reason I'm talking about Advance Wars here. Um, I wouldn't otherwise be talking about it. So anyway, these are my thoughts. F-Zero coming to the N64 stuff. 
Advance Wars getting delayed and the crazy circumstances around it. And so I want to hear what you guys have to say about my thoughts. And that will be a wrap on today's video. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.